Feel that sense of alignment through your spine. And if you've had a busy time up until, you know, you've walked into or onto your mat right now, take a moment to kind of disengage from what came before and what's coming after. And instead, just allow yourself to take the time, the patience, the breath to ground yourself and be here now. I know it takes a little time to kind of switch gears and get centered and ready to care for yourself in the way that your practice is. So just take a little bit of a body scan, a body temperature reading, a weather reading, daily weather, you know, gauge to see how you are. Are you tired? Are you energized? Are you hurting anywhere? Do you feel really good today? How is the state of your mind? Do you have um, some heavy worries or burdens? Are you filled with lots of to-do lists or thoughts about something in particular? Or is your mind calm and ready to be in a steady state for your practice? How about your emotional states? Check in with the way your emotions are landing in your body. How are they landing in your breath? Take the time to drop in and feel your presence. Let the shoulders relax away from the ears. Feel the expansiveness of your rib cage. Just notice if there's anything binding you, if there's anything kind of interrupting the steadiness of your breath, the ease in your mind body. And do what you can to allow whatever these things are to start to fall away just a little bit. Start our practice with some deep gratitude. So first for your health, your ability to step onto your mat and practice the time in your day. And even if things, you know, are, you can't move certain parts the way you want in your body, what are you capable of today? Can you focus on what's available, what's possible? And let this filter into your gratitude. And then let's just contemplate three things. They can be anything at all, the smallest thing to the biggest thing that you want to uh, just land your gratitude upon. And then hopefully now that you've contemplated your three things a moment, bring your palms together at the heart and bow in. Create an intention for yourself, for your practice. Okay, and then let's release the hands and come onto your back. All right, so find your way. And this gift of beginning your practice is a nice thing to lie down for a moment so that your joints spread out and just rock your legs kind of uh, internal and external rotation all the way from your femur bones so you can just allow 
that sense of um, ease through your hips, through your spine, through your legs. And then stretch your arms and lengthen that right side, left side. Awaken and open. And then draw the knees into the chest and give yourself a hug here. Rock around, sway from side to side. All right, and then let's circle. Circle one direction. And if you always start the same direction, maybe try starting the other direction. Find the pathways that are a little less traveled in the body. Lay down some tracks. All right, and then open your knees wide and bring them back in. So they can be full circles, they can be half circles, they can be straight lines, whatever feels nice. All right, and then find your right knee coming into the chest and make sure you have the strap close by. So grab it now if you need it. And if you don't have a strap, it's okay. Right knee into the chest, roll around your ankles and wake up your feet like we always do. So the feet are so important when we kind of shroud them in shoes all day long for much of the day. So enjoy your naked bare feet. And then go ahead and lift your legs straight up in the air. Now you can either either hold behind your hamstring with your hands or you can grab onto the strap and put it around your foot. Okay, so let's lift that right leg up in the air, extending through your spine. Move your hip away from your shoulder and feel the long side bodies. Root down through your femur bone, rise up through your foot. Find the breath, elongate the spine. It's okay if you need to bend your left knee and put your left foot on the floor. Uh, sometimes that makes things a little bit easier through your pelvis, so you can really move your right femur bone away from your shoulder. Okay, now let's cross the right leg over to the left and just feel a little stretch in the outside of your hip. Stretch through your foot, press through the big toe and the inner heel, and keep lengthening the spine. and bring that leg back up. Let's open the right leg out to the right and decide what you want your left leg to be doing. You can um, bend your knee and let your knee fall out to the side. Your leg can be straight, whatever feels nice. Supta Padabhastasana two. Okay, and reach the crown, stretch through your little spine. How is your breath? And then inhale and lift that leg straight up in the air. Cross the foot over again, one more time, coming into Supta Padagastasana three. And then release that leg straight up in the air. Two feet in the strap, extend through the spine. Feel that spinal length, wide sit bones here. Feel the hip glutes stretch a little bit and then take your right foot out of the strap, either right foot on the floor or right leg long on the floor. Decide what's best for you. Reach your left foot up, drop your left foot down. Feel the extension through the sides of your body. You can flex and point your toes. You can roll around your ankle, whatever feels nice. Find your breath. Part of the, having gratitude is having presence. So it's hard to be thankful for something if you're letting it pass you by. So even just the feeling of stretching and the ease of being on your back, can you have some gratitude? Cross the left leg over to the right, left femur bone moving away from left hip, stretch through your foot. Notice the breath, see if you can stay in that nice, beautiful rhythm of breathing. All right, lift the left leg back up, open the left leg out to the left. You can stay grounded through your right thigh or bend your right knee. Extend the spine no matter what you're doing. We're feeling that long length. Stretch through your foot, stay rooted. Can you feel that the stretch is going into the belly of your inner thigh and hamstring instead of right at your knee or sit bone? And then lift that leg up, cross over one more time for a couple of 
couple of breaths, just let the left leg cross to the right. Okay, and then come back. Go ahead and take your left foot and grab onto it. I know we didn't do this on the other side, we will. Half happy baby pose. Feel free to bend your right knee and put your right foot on the floor. And just feel into the deep flexion of your hip. Extend the spine. And then we're going to join this into a full happy baby pose. Right foot comes up to. Okay, feel free to rock a little bit, kind of balancing out your two sides. And then steady yourself. Wide sit bones, long spine. Go ahead and let go of the left foot and place either the left foot on the ground or the left leg long on the floor and stretch into half happy baby pose with your right foot. Extending the spine, sit bones stay wide, feel the deep compression in the hip. And then go ahead and lift two legs straight up in the air, lengthening your legs up, no strap this time, just find your core. You can have your arms down at your sides or your arms up over your head. Find what's working for your body. Meeting the arms out to the side and just feel some stability through the core of your body. And then bend your knees and we're gonna remove our knees over to the left and then over to the right. And you can go, um, try not to go super speedy, but you can go all the way down to elbow to your elbow with your knees or you can go like one inch off the midline. So we're working the core here, just waking up the obliques. Make sure you're breathing. Who knows where you want to inhale or exhale, but just make sure that you are not holding your breath. Okay, so just going back and forth between your two sides and then relax. Starfish open your body. Stretch your limbs, your hip flexors, lengthen through your sides. Exhale, knees into your chest and your chin up. Breathe deeply, open your body out. Exhale, draw your body in. One more time, expand, stretch, exhale, draw it in. Roll over onto your side and come up onto your hands and your knees. Okay, so feel free to sit back and just roll your wrists if you know you need a little wrist opening before being on all fours. And then as you're ready, come down onto your hands and your knees. If you can't be on your knees, you can do this on a wall. So you can be standing with your hands against a wall. Let's go ahead and start moving through some cat cows, arching and rounding the spine, taking your time. Notice the breath. Notice the body. And then stretch back towards child's pose. Walk the hands forward. See if you can create some deep length. So inch, 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 and get the side bodies to grow a little longer. Drop the hips down toward the heels. Find your breath and let's open up through the side. So stretch through your, your over to the side. It doesn't matter which side. See if you can feel not only your shoulder and your ribs, but the space between your ribs and your pelvis. Can you take a deep breath into that gap? And then come back around over to the other side and lengthen here. All right, and then come back to center, up onto your hands and knees and find your all, all the way up to dog pose. So find your body lengthening, stretch and move. Feel free to pedal your feet. You can drop one heel, you can sway, you can do anything you want. Feel the extension, so bend your knees if you want to. Feel the full length of your sides. Reach the space from your ribs to your pelvis and get it a little bit longer, a little bit more spacious. And we'll walk your feet forward, come into Uttanasana, fold in half. Feel free to shake, move, any kind of swaying, bouncing, rocking that feels nice. Halfway lift, sit bones get high and wide. Exhale and melt and fold back down. Push off your feet, rise up, 
reaching the arms, open the breath, exhale and trace down through the center and pause here for a moment. Ground yourself, feel your feet. As you're ready, come up onto your toes and feel a little balance work just coming on to your toes. And if your toes hurt when you do this, just go a little bit more weighted onto your toes instead of your heels. And then roll back onto your feet and see if you can feel your core kick in as you try to go both forward and backward. All right, rise up. Bring your arms up, grab onto the left wrist with the right hand up and over, extend through your side. Inner thighs moving back, deep breaths. And then come back, change sides over to the other side you go. Inhaling and exhaling. And then cactus your arms or stretch your limbs. Exhale and shake out your hands. Get some energy moving through your fingertips. Okay. Rise up. Exhale and fold. Release down. Halfway lift. You can put your hands on blocks if you want. Spine grows. Exhale and step your left foot back. Right foot comes forward, lunging. Feel the extension of your spine here. Grow a little longer. Let's go ahead and find a little bit of straighter leg in the front foot. Go ahead and um, put your hands on higher blocks if you want and lift your toes up off the floor. Square the hips and then place your knee or your bend your knee and place your foot back down. Rise up, crescent lunge. Arms do not have to come up in the air. They absolutely can. Or maybe you're better off somewhere else, either for your breath or your shoulder or your energy level today. Try not to smush your low back. So feel the sense of broadness and space engaged through your core. Let's go ahead and twist to the right so your arms can come out or your hands can stay on your hips. Notice if your hip pops out to the side, see if you can drop it back in. Soften the back knee so you don't want any hyperextension. Root your feet and rise up through your crown. And then exhale and release your hands, come back, come into Uttanasana, bend your knees, relax your head, melt a bit. Halfway lift, hands can come on blocks if you want. Exhale and melt back down, the other foot back, come to a lunge. Extending through your spine, enjoy the awakening of the hip flexors as well as the deep compression in your front hip. Breathe well. And then let's straighten that front leg again. If you're, you know, a big fan of the flex stretch, flex stretch, then you go ahead and bend your knee and lengthen. Otherwise, just hang out here. Maybe lift your toes up off the floor. Extend your heart, lengthen your spine. And then come back to a lunge. Find your breath, push off your feet and rise up. Maybe the arms come out. Maybe the arms are up. Maybe your hands stay really close to the heart. So find where your balance is best, where your breath is best, where your sense of space in your body is best, where are you most stable. And then as you're ready, let's twist to the side. Hands can be on your hips or arms can be out. Try not to come out of your lunge. Stay in the depth of your lunge. Hug to the midline with your inner thighs. Keep pressing your front heel into the ground so your glute is turned on. And then rise up, breathe, exhale, hands down onto the ground, dog pose. Full inhales, full exhales. Let's come forward into a plank. Start to feel that sense of steadiness and stability. Breathing well. To wake up your obliques, let's turn the hips to the right. Chest is facing down and then back to center. Turn the hips to the left. Chest is facing the floor. Back to center one more time each side. 
Make sure you're breathing. Don't hold your breath. Back to center. Turn your hips to the left. Back to center. Go ahead and put your knees down and find your way to the floor. Take a deep breath in. Cobra pose. Open the chest. Exhale. And melt back down. Let's try one more. Open the chest. Exhale and melt and release. Take your arms down at your sides, palms facing the floor. Lift the heads of the arm bones, feel the back of the body start to work and lift everything up. So the back body is strong and working. Breathe, feel the length in the back of your neck. Engage your glutes. Exhale and melt back down. Turn your head one direction. Pick up your feet and rock your feet left and right. Just let your back loosen and soften. And then come all the way back up on tall fours. Swish your spine around any way it feels good. Okay. And let's find a twist here. Inhale, reach your arm either way, up either arm, up and drop that shoulder down. Finding the breath. And just enjoy, you know, twists are so beautiful in the body. There's a lot of activity all throughout your spine. And then inhale, lift that arm back up, hand down onto the ground and change your sides. Arm up, slide arm down. And then release, lift that arm all the way back up in the air, place the hand down. Go ahead and come on up to dog pose. Okay, so find the long spine, extend again. Such a beautiful posture. Maybe you want your feet wider or your hands wider, whatever feels good. Experiment to what gives you a sense of ease and breath. Then bring your feet back if they were wider. Bring them back hip width apart. Lift your right leg up in the air. Exhale, bring your knee right to the center of your chest. Plank pose with your knee in. And let's windshield wipe our knee left and right. Just waking up the core some. If you need to put your back knee onto the ground, you can do this with your knee on the floor. And then bring that leg all the way back up. Place your foot down onto the ground. Second side, left leg up. Exhale, knee to chest. Let's windshield wiper, left and right. And you can always put your back knee down onto the ground if you need some support. Inhale, lift that leg all the way high. Place your foot down onto the ground, two feet walking forward. Come into Uttanasana, fold, let your head relax. Inhale for a halfway lift. Put your hands on high blocks. Extend the spine again. You get a feeling of deep length in your side bodies. That space between your ribs and your pelvis, can you lengthen there? Keep your right foot forward and take your left foot back a shorter way, okay? And come on up to stand. Prars Vodhanasana, maybe your arms come up, maybe they come out, maybe they come back, maybe you interlace, maybe your hands stay together. So find a way to lean forward a little bit that's stable for your body. See if you can engage the back. So sometimes I think the best way to do that is to have your arms back behind you, palms facing forward so that you're supporting, you can feel the muscles along your back work, not just your core and not just your legs. Find the breath and come back up. We're gonna come into this more deeply now, but with support. So put your hands down on your blocks. And if the blocks are too low, you can always put one block down and stack another block on top on the inside edge of your foot so you have some extra height. Alternately, you can put a chair in front of you or put your hands on a piece of furniture. Just root that hip back, extend through your spine, Find the space between the ribs and the pelvis and make it long. Ground your feet, square the hips. 
Inner thighs roll back, sit bones widen. From here, let's hop up onto your right foot, lift that left leg in the air, half splits, engage. So the glutes are working on both sides just a little differently. Find the gap between ribs and pelvis again. Engage your core. Exhale and place your foot down, half lift. Spine grows. Take the other side. So left foot forward, right foot back. Shorten up your stance. So our legs are not long apart. Come up to stand. Find your breath. Decide where you want your arms to be in space. Anywhere is good. Tip forward a little bit. But see if you can kind of rocket your spine. So you're reaching your crown and you're not going, you know, we're not rounding forward. We're trying to lengthen. Feel the feet stabilize. This front glute is going to have to work hard to keep you there as well as the hamstring. Maybe your arms come back to palms face forward and you use a little bit of effort in the back of your spine as well. Breathing deeply. Rise back up, bring your arms to the sky, find your breath, exhale, hands on blocks, come into a half lift. All right, so work with your hip muscles, your outer hips, your glutes are going to be working hard on that standing leg. Feel free to micro bend the knee and then feel the engagement of your leg in the air, lift it. Feel the foot stretch back, find the gap between the ribs and pelvis, engage your core. Exhale and place your foot down onto the ground. Bend your knees, relax the spine a bit. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, right foot back. I'm sorry, left foot back, right foot forward, Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. Take your arms down to be by your sides to begin. Have a sense of bending that knee and rise up without lifting your arms first. Just feel that sense of grounding. Root your feet. Open across your chest. And then when you're ready, reach the arms up. Maybe you tip your head back. Maybe you don't. Finding your breath here. And then exhale. Lean your whole body forward. Palms are back there. Our arms are back there. Palms are facing the floor. Feel your back body work. Hop up onto your right foot and come into Virabhadrasana. Three. Warrior three. Extend through your spine. Use your glutes. Find the gap between ribs and pelvis. Engage your core. Lift the heads and the arm bones back. And then that big giant step back. Arms coming back up. Hands down. Dog pose. Deep breaths here. Long spine. Let's just switch to the other side. Left foot forward, back heel plants down. Come on up to bear one, arms back to begin, palms facing the floor. Move the heads of the arm bones back. Widen across your collarbones. Integrate your rib cage. Can you feel the space between ribs and pelvis and create as much length there as you can with support? Rise up, maybe your arms stay down, maybe your arms come up, maybe you tip your head back. Whatever you're doing, be really mindful that you're not just crunching in the back of your body and floating the ribs out, integrate. Okay, and then lean forward, arms come back, hop up, Virabhadrasana three on this side. Stretch through that leg in the air, engage through your glutes, feel your torso. So Core is working. There's space between ribs and pelvis. If you start to wobble, it's okay. The only thing that's going to happen is you're going to put your foot down and then you're going to try to come back in. All right, and then place the heel down onto the ground. Back into mirror one. Hands down onto the ground. Come to a plank. Hold yourself steady. Turn your hips to the right. Come back to center. Turn your hips to the left. Remember, you can everything can be modified to make things more gentle, to make things more protective. Come down and rest on the floor. 
Let's have some symmetry. Put your hands underneath your forehead. Curl your toes under and let your legs come a little wider. Take a deep breath in and lift your legs up. Engage both sides of your outer hips simultaneously. And then relax and melt. Pick up your feet and rock left and right. We need good strong obliques. So let's stretch our legs straight on the ground. Lift your arm in the air so we're on our right side, left arms in the air, or you can have your left hand on your hip. So, you know, our obliques, these muscles along our side waists are responsible for turning us, twisting, but they're also responsible for side bending us. So we're just going to find a little bit of side body um, strength where we're using both our transverse abdominis and our oblique simultaneously. Remember your transverse abdominis is your corset muscle. All right, so let's take a deep inhale and relax your right side waist into the floor. And as you exhale, lift your side waist away from the floor. Inhale, relax into the floor. Exhale, lift away. Feel this on your exhales. Inhale, into the ground. Last time, exhale, engage. Now hang out here with the engagement, kind of like a drawstring around your waist, and lift your leg off your leg. Left leg lifts. Hand can come in the air too if you want, or you can keep your hand on your hip. Can you breathe and maintain that intra-abdominal pressure, the stability? And then relax and let that go. Soften, come rolling onto your belly or your back, whichever way you want to go. And we're going to turn and go to a bit of a roll, you know, laying on your other side. So on your left now. Okay, find your breath. You can support your head with your arm or with a block or with a blanket, whatever feels good. You can have your arm in the air if you want. You can have your hand on your hip. Sometimes I put my hand in front of me. So just find where you're most stable. And just notice, is, is this more or less aware on this side versus the other side? So allow your side waist to fall into the earth on your inhale. And as you exhale, engage your side waist. Inhale to relax your side waist into the ground. Exhale to lift. It's pretty common to want to do the opposite breath. So see if you can train your breath. Inhale, awaken, allow your side waist to relax. Exhale, lift your side waist off the floor. Now hold this st stability through your core. Maybe lift your arm in the air. Maybe not. Maybe your hand stays on your hip. Maybe lift your leg in the air and find that sense of stability. This is a lot of balance. So if you roll on your back accidentally, that's all good. Don't worry. Just be where you are. Keep breathing. Even though you're holding tension in your sideways, can you still breathe? And then relax and melt. Come to be on your back for a moment. Bend your knees. Put your feet on the floor and just rest here for a breath. Okay, now pick up your feet and reach them straight up in the air. You can have your knees bent as well. So decide which way for your obliques is better for your back. So we're always caring for our spine, right? We don't want to overdo. Interlace your hands behind your head like a old school sit-ups, okay? Take your breath. Now, if your legs are straight, we're going to drop your right leg down and lift your right chest toward your left knee and then come back up and switch sides. I'm in, my couch is in the way, so that's a problem. So I'm going to turn and do this lengthwise. If you are using bent knees, that's fine too. All you have to do here is just straighten one leg out as you lift your right elbow or right chest toward your left knee, straighten your right leg and then come back. Make sure you're breathing. 
no matter whether you're choosing the straight leg version or the bent leg version, make sure you are breathing. Remember, we're not trying to crank our elbows over. We're really working with the center of the body. And after you finish going left, put your knees, your feet rather down onto the ground. Take a deep breath. Relax. Okay. Stretch your limbs out wide. Starfish open. Exhale, knees into your chest. Pick your head up. Roll over onto your side and come back up onto your hands and your knees. Swiss your spine around, sway. Anything that's gonna kind of release some of the tension through the core of your body. And then eventually finding your way to dog pose. Okay. Just go ahead and step your right foot forward again. Blocks are nice, short stance. Maybe stack up two blocks, even if you can go deeper, we have one, we're going into a deeper pose than this pose, so I don't want you to um, overdo your back. So go a little lighter than you not sometimes might if you need to for a revolved triangle pose. Right hand on your hip, left hand lifts up, extend through your spine, find that breath, and place your hands down on two blocks, one block, whatever feels good to you. If you need to, take your right foot out to the right a little bit more. Widen your sit bones, feel the inner spiral of your thighs, extend the spine, ground the feet, and start to twist on the exhales using your breath. Try not to roll from your shoulders or roll from your hips. Twist from the core, twist from the work of those obliques that we just woke up a whole lot. Maybe your hand comes in the air, maybe your head lifts up, so this turns up toward the sky. Exhale and walk your back foot forward. Come into a wide to the edges of the mat and squat down. Let your head relax. Hips either a little higher than your knees or in line with your knees. And then find a halfway lift with your legs this wide. Exhale and relax. Take your left foot forward and your right foot back. Short stance. Whatever you need for a revolved triangle pose, block-wise, have it handy. You can take your left foot out to the left as much as you need to. Hips are square. Reach that arm up in the air. Take a deep breath and extend forward. When you place your hand on one or two blocks, if you're using two blocks, try not to bury your weight down. So we're not falling into the blocks. We're light. Reach the hip back. Notice if your left hip wants to hike out to the side, see if you can draw it in and take the femur bone back. Stay grounded through the big toe. Nice wide sit bones, spine grows. Once you have the foundation, then work with the breath and the obliques to twist you so that you're not losing the stable pelvis and legs. The more you have space in your spine, the easier twisting becomes. And then relax and melt. Back foot comes forward, fold, bend your knees, and then take your feet to the edges of the mat again. Relax. Halfway lift here with nice wide legs. Exhale and heel toe your feet in. So this next pose is tricky and you can use support if you want for a revolved Art of Chandrasana, Revolved Half Moon Pose. So I'll show it in the middle of the room, but you can always have a foot. So if you're, if you're trying to figure out how to measure yourself, just walk to a wall so that you can be at right angles so that your legs can be at right angles to the wall. Um, if you're going to put your uh, torso, you know, you could try that way. I think that's the way it will try for today with your foot against a wall. It can take some of the effort out of your glutes and your hips and stabilize you. But you can always do this pose also holding on. So you, if you want to try a different way, you can start in, in half dog with a nice long spine and then lift one leg back and not have the support. So choose whether you want your foot supported or your hand supporting. Hand supporting is the easiest. 
foot supporting is the next easiest. No support is the hardest. Okay, so choose the way, your pathway. We're going to come into revolved half moon. So first, let's just start out in half splits on your right foot. Whether your hands are on blocks on the floor or whether your hands are on a piece of furniture, whatever you've got going on, extend the spine here. Find your breath. Our right foot is down. We're going to keep our left hand on the block. And you can stack more than one block. Be so mindful. Blocks are wobbly. So if you're feeling a little nervous, it's better to put your hand on a chair or on something that's a little bit more stable than a block. Find the breath. We're going to twist to the right. So before you do, lift that leg, engage your glutes, feel your core, lengthen from ribs to pelvis, and start to turn a little bit. Only go as far as your body says go. Use your obliques and your exhales to do the turning. Keep resisting that leg high in the air. Maybe your hand lifts in the air, maybe it doesn't. How's your breath? And then relax and place two feet wide on the mat. Bend your knees, relax your head, and see how you did. So inevitably, I can't see you all, but inevitably when I teach this pose in person, somebody does half moon pose, just straight up half moon pose. So we are doing revolved half moon pose today. So whatever foot's on the ground, the opposite hand is gonna go on the ground. Do you want your hand support? So if you're doing the hand support, you know, and you're in half lifts, right? Then from here, you can just turn and put your hand on your hip, or you can bring your arm in the air. If your foot's on the wall, same thing. Hand on the hip or hand in the air. So let's try the second side. Okay, left foot is coming forward. Before you do this, Notice if you don't like this pose. And if you don't, why? Are, do you resist? Because, you know, we can't go very far in a pose like this. And so does that feel uncomfortable to have a, a you know, a dam, a stop gate that's sooner than you wish it were? Try not to push past what your breath can take you. Let's take our left foot forward and our right foot back. Come into half splits. Be very mindful of what you're putting your hands on. So if you're wobbly, this is not going to be good for you. So make sure you have some stability. Stretch your leg back. Half splits. Our left foot is on the ground. Our right hand is going to stay on the block or on the wall or on the table. And take your left hand on your hip and start to rotate left. You don't have to go very far in this pose to feel like you are meeting your resistance. Breathe, let your obliques take you. Be strong in that leg in the air. Lift it high, extend the spine. And then exhale and relax. And now look, we're all done with that. Okay, so take your legs wide on the mat, bend your knees a little bit, relax the spine. Symmetry. Okay, find your way to dog pose. So long spine here. Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. Maybe try taking your feet wide on the mat and turn your toes in. Big belly breaths. Come into a plank if you want, or just come down onto the ground with your knees and find your way to the floor. It's important to do a symmetrical pose like this after strong twisting, which that was. So curl your toes under, lift your legs and move them wide apart on the mat. You can either put your head on your hands or you can have your arms down, but lift your legs. Maybe your torso comes too, but you don't have to lift your torso. Feel the hug on your sacrum. Engage your glutes. And then exhale and relax. Turn your head and rock your feet left and right. All right, let's go ahead and roll over onto our back. Come to lie down. Okay. Breathing deeply. Okay, grab a block and put it on its lowest height 
under your sacrum. We're gonna stretch your glutes and everything in just a moment, but first, just feel that stabilizing force on the sacroiliac joints. So the block is across your sacrum on the lowest height. Even if you like doing it much higher, for today, try to stay low. So that you can just feel that this is gentle and supportive, kind of resetting the puzzle pieces of your pelvis and sacrum back together. Find the deep inhale. Find the steady exhale. Okay, now just keep on the block. Bring your knees to your up in the air. Now they can stay right over your pelvis. They can come forward a little bit. See what feels good for your low back. We're just trying to soothe the spine now. Sometimes that revolved triangle, I mean, revolved uh, Ardhachanasana, it's a doozy, right? It's a big, strong pose. It's not an easy pose. So let, let your back relax a little bit. Feel that sense of symmetry. And then release your feet down onto the ground. Pick up your hips, get that block out of there. Let's cross the right thigh over the left thigh and bring your knees up toward your chest. Relax your shoulders, breathe deeply. The neck is soft, the base of the skull is relaxing on the floor or on a blanket. You can come to hold your feet too if you want to go a little deeper into the stretch. How's your breathing? And then unwind that pose. Stretch into a starfish, two legs wide, arms out. Exhale and bring your knees back up. And now let's cross the left thigh. So go high on your thighs. So don't just like cross at your knee. Try to cross at your thighs and then bring your knees to your chest. So you can hold on to your knees. You can hold on behind your legs. You can hold on to your shins. You can grab onto your feet. So just see what your body is calling for. Stretch your limbs wide, extend open. Hang out here for a moment. Just let your hip flexors extend, your whole torso broad, your limbs wide. And then bring your knees to your chest again. And this time we're gonna find full happy baby like we did in the beginning. Bend your knees, maybe rock from side to side and see what feels good. And then relax and melt back down. All right, we have a couple of minutes before Shavasana. And after a practice that involves a lot of twisting, everybody's a little different. Some people like to nourish with a little back bending. Some people like to nourish with a little forward bending. Some people like to invert, like put your legs up the wall. So I want you to just choose what it is that your body is calling for. Maybe you need a little bit more of a hip stretch or a glute stretch. So if you know if you were on your own and nobody is telling you what to do, what is your body asking for? So pause for a moment and ask, what is it that I need? 
it could be just starting Shavasana and allowing your body to deeply rest. It could be a plow pose. There's so many variations of what's available. So listen to the ask that your body has. If it's a two-sided thing, make sure you take time for both sides of whatever it is you're doing. If the pose is strong and needs a counter pose, make sure you leave time for a counter pose. Go in the other direction a little bit. All right, and then anything else, just let yourself work out the kinks and eventually find Shavasana. So the, take your time. If you're in the midst of a little sequence that feels awesome, then by all means, keep at it. And if you're ready to rest, uh, I might suggest putting your legs up a little higher today, like on a bolster or even on a couch or a chair. Um, but that's just a suggestion. So whatever feels really good for your body. So as you find Shavasana, remember this is a, a practice of gratitude. Shavasana is such a gift to be able to be free in the mind, body, and breath, and rest. Really, what else is better? So let's enjoy and stay very present for the art and practice of Shavasana. Melt as you come to the floor, feel your limbs get heavy. Make sure your pelvis feels neutral. Allow your breath to come in deeply, leave easily. Feel the sense of surrender through your skull. So drop your head. soft face and eyes. And let yourself rest.
Let's begin to deepen our breathing one more time. Feel a sense of space as you inhale. As you exhale, relax your limbs, your pelvis, your spine, your head into the floor. Let's take our time to roll over onto your side. Use your arms to help lift yourself back upright when you're ready. Bring your hands to your heart and bow in. Namaste. Thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day.